Welcome, in this video we're talking about Google dorking. So the objective here is to examine Google dorking history and explore the operations of Google dorking. So the history is essentially Google dorking has been around for a long time. However, because you're free to search whatever you want, it's kind of what you're doing with those searches that become a little bit more uh, gray. You have to be careful because what you can do can definitely be construed as possible offenses, especially in the US, when we're looking at how vague things like the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, the CFAA, can be. So you can search for things, but it's what are you doing with those searches? What are you allowed to do with those searches? That's where it becomes a little bit more uh, uh, issuey. So how does it work? So dorking basically employed across various search engines, not just Google. We can use everyday search engines like Google or Bing or Yahoo or DuckDuckGo or Shodan. All of them have what's called search operators. And basically, this is a way to take a string of search terms and return matches based off of that result. By search engines are also programmed to accept the more advanced operators the better define and refine your searching. We have eight or nine common search operators. In text, all in text, in title, in URL, file type, uh, ext, in text, site, and cache. So we're going to show examples of how to use these. But first of all, I want to go through kind of their meanings. So in text, basically, this will ask Google to show pages that have the term in their HTML title. All in text basically will look for which finds all the terms in the title of a page, not just specifically in the title of the HTML code. In the URL, this will search for specific terms in the URL. For example, we could do like a register.php and it will search for that string. We can search for a file type by looking using the file type colon. This will search for certain file types. Example might be file type uh, colon PDF. This will search for PDFs uh, specifically. EXT works very similar to file types, except for it can find extension files as well. In text, we'll search for the content of the page this is a little easier, uh, and it searches more like the plain Google searching, but it, it provides some more features. Next, we have site. This is basically if we want to limit our searching to a site. And cache, this will show you cached versions of the website. So here's two examples. We've already looked at the in title Webcam XP 5. We're going to go ahead and look at in title admin login to see what we can see. First thing I want to do is I want to get to Google. And I want to go ahead and again, I want to use my in title webcam 5. So again, we've already shown that this brings up webcams if we want to. So we can do things like instead of webcam, let's go ahead and let's do admin login. So we can see different admin logins. And since we're not listing a specific site, it's going to search almost everywhere. Shodan, again, crawls the internet for every device. Google looks for just web pages. So this is going to return anything with a admin login uh, page. And sometimes it's useful. Sometimes it's not. But the interesting part is being able to use our dorking techniques to pull out information. So I want to go ahead. I want to search site Starbucks com and I also want to look for file type PDF so site Starbucks no oh, helps if I spell it right star 
And that's not how you spell Starbucks. So sometimes you do it enough and Google gets kind of angry at you. Starbucks. So, starbucks.com. And I'm looking for PDFs. And specifically what it's going to do is it's only going to find PDFs off of Starbucks uh, main domain. It's going to look for all subdomains as well. But here we have instructions for completing a landlord agreement. Uh, here we have confidentiality and disclosures. We have payment forms. Oh, here we have a case. So here we have landlord electronic payment setup forms. This might be useful, it may not be. This is some type of non-disclosure. This is a payment setup form again. Here is a course or a, a, a case document, a lawsuit. Plaintiff, uh, unopposed motion to support this order. No, this is the master case, that number. This is a case in 2012 that they probably didn't mean to keep public, but they did. The issue is when we're doing these types of searching, we don't know what we're going to find. And that's why it's important to be able to do it. So what we can do is we can actually look at things like, I'm actually gonna open up another Google page, Google. We have the Google hacking database. Because of my searching, Google is not very happy. All right, so Google Hacking Database just kind of shows you some dorking uh, ones that people have found that have been kind of interesting. And they go on for quite a while. It shows all different types of dorking uh, strings that people have found kind of interesting. Again, the more that you do this, the more that your searching becomes a little weird. Because I've been doing this, Google's gonna keep giving me redirect pages because of my dorking. It's not that Google dorking is illegal, it's just normally Google doesn't like it doing it. So it will be a timed uh, block that I have to wait. Uh, I'm using Edge so I don't get my Capia, so I just kinda have to wait. So I got tired of waiting, so I'm just going to go ahead and use Chrome instead. So I did entitle index of in URL FTP. This is going to be looking for open FTPs. And so here we have some random addresses. We have NASA. We have um, westvermont.edu. We have nova.gov. And these are FTP servers that are open and accessible. And again, we can kind of do what we want, but again, we have to remember the legality, being able to manipulate these, this content is not always is legal, so we have to be careful there. So I did that by doing in text index of, in quotes or in parentheses, quotes, not parentheses, in URL.fpp. And so I'm gonna do one more to kind of see what else we can find. So last one I want to do is in URL colon I want to see if I can see this location process self CWD if I can see this on any server it means it's actually open and public to the internet and it's actually a really bad thing so we have a mit.edu this server we have a overstack.com nope so some of these are actually showing content that they should not be showing. Like here, this system is actually showing its entire directory. So it's listing all of its processes on the internet. So that's not really good. Uh, some of these other servers, again, these are showing the entire root directory of their Linux machines on the internet. And we did that by just simple searches for pros 
South and CWD. You can do a lot with dorking. It's just you need to be careful because you can find stuff that you should not be able to find. I have found actual internal only documents for organizations that uh, were confidential, that were supposed to be private, yet someone put them on a web server and forgot that they were there. So dorking actually is extremely powerful. I did a quick overview of what dorking is and how it functions in this video. So if you have any questions, definitely reach out. I do have exercises kind of helping you explore dorking a little bit more. Questions? Let me know. Thank you.